How's it going everybody? Datodoy here back with another Dragon Ball Fighters video for you all today and it is finally time to take a look at the tier list for Dragon Ball Fighters now that we are officially a few months out from the season 3 update as a whole and a few weeks out from the newest character being released that of course being UI Goku and believe me it's a good thing we waited for him because spoilers he, he's going to be pretty high on this list but of course before we get into talking about the actual tier list I do like to start these videos off with a disclaimer that tier lists are meant to be fun you know to start discussion within the community and just see what the community perceives is strong at a certain point in time. I should also mention that we are going to be looking at a few different tier lists today. I'll be grabbing some from the community just so you can see some opinions that aren't my own. But of course, we will also be taking a look at my current thoughts on the game. And of course, if you want to leave your thoughts down below in the comment, feel free to. I love to go through these, especially the tier list videos, and I'll heart any suggestions I see, any thoughts on certain characters. So certainly don't feel left out. Uh, and if you think any of my choices are dumb, uh, you know, there's an avenue to let me know. <laughs> but no, but jokes aside, please feel free to let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And now, Finally, with that all out of the way, we can just jump into my list itself, starting off with just the S plus characters. Those include Base Vegeta, Ultra Instinct Goku, Bardock, Trunks, Kid Buu, Teen Gohan, and Yamcha in that order. And now because this is the S plus category, I actually do want to go through this entire row and talk a little bit about why I put these characters where I do, because like I said before, this is order. So at first, my number one character in the game, the character I think is the strongest right now, Base Vegeta. This is a character that is incredibly popular these days, and you're bound to see him in a ton of tournaments as well as a ton of your online matches because well he's just so well-rounded he has access to a lot of 50 50s as well as just having really good tools for the neutral game including one of the things that i've always really respected about him being his key blast and just how crazy fast these are for projectiles you can really control a lot of space for vegeta and it's also nice that along with season three came the half bar ex move change which also very much benefits him because a lot of his ex moves are also really ridiculous i'm looking at this cross up leg right here i uh i dislike this move immensely I I wish it wasn't a thing. Of course, when I'm playing him, it's great, but every other time, I really wish this move didn't exist. And of course, the character is also very well known for his loops, which give him access to a ton of damage, both in the corner, and even when you're mid-screen, there's a couple of setups to get some loops going and get you closer to the corner, so you're never truly safe when base Vegeta's on the screen. Now, moving on to UI Goku as my number two character. Again, there's a lot to say for this guy, but I want to start off by saying that I believe if you play UI Goku super optimally, he might actually be the actual number one character in the game, above base Vegeta, even. Now, I don't really know if we'll ever see a UI Goku played at that level, but I'm sure some pro players will get very close. But even if you're no pro, it's easy to see why UI Goku is so strong. Not only does he have a lot of tools, he also has an amazing auto combo. And let's not even mention his jab, which has a much, much bigger hitbox than it appears to be. Seriously, that jab is one of the most annoying parts about his entire kit. But he also has his own unique wake up option, which catches some people off guard and forces people to reconsider how they're going to attack you once you're on the ground. His key blast is insanely fast and has high priority. And while it doesn't beat beams, it is sometimes so fast that it can stop a beam even while it's getting started up. So really good move there. He also has plenty of options against Super Dash and his EX flip. I don't even know what this move is called. Is so spammable. It's ridiculous. Seriously, UI Goku gets so much value out of EX moves being half a bar. I could probably go on for a lot longer about this character, but I've pretty much said the really big aspects. Oh, also he does a lot of damage for pretty much nothing. So yeah, really, really strong character. Up next is Bardock and Trunks. Bardock is up here because, well, you know, he's a very standard character. Plays by the rules of Dragon Dragon Ball Fighters very well, and of course, is the both the classic auto combo, which is always going to be really good, and the classic Lariat, which is always going to be really good. As long as Bardock keeps those two tools, he's going to be up here for a long time to come. Trunks, on the other hand, was the massive winner of the Season 3 patch, and it benefited very heavily from EX moves dropping down only half a bar. Because of that, EX flip mix-ups are back on the table, and if you're good enough to do them, they are a massive tool. In fact, if Trunks is played optimally, I know we keep bringing this up, I would actually say he might be the second best character. Of course, that's like inhuman level of optimization. I'm talking hitting the EX flip every time, stuff like that. So don't take that as me saying Trunks is the second best character or anything like that. I think he's solid as fourth, especially when sparking Trunks, you get access to a whole load of new mix-ups with this guy. And I definitely think Trunks utilizes sparking the best. The only reason that's not too big a deal is I do think that sparking is better used as an early game tool, trying to make sure that you keep your full team alive. But if the game ever does progress to a point where you really do want to save sparking for the last character and you get that limit break, yeah, Trunks in limit break with sparking, probably the best sparking character out there. Moving on to Kid Buu and Team Gohan. Again, these are two classic characters that have been in the game for a long time. I will say though, Kid Buu is up here for similar reasons to why he's always been up here, but a lot of pro players are starting to look more heavily at his C assist, which is a beam into the usual C assist knockdown, which does give you a very easy conversion. Now, I myself personally don't think beam C assist are that great, but it's hard to say that I'm probably not just the one in the wrong on that when so many talented players are picking that up as a legitimate option. Speaking of good C assist though, Team Gohan has one that is surprisingly annoying. Not that 
that's the reason it's up here. I don't know if anybody's using that aside from me. But Teen Gohan is up here for the pure damage and pressure he's able to put out. Of course, speaking of auto combos, he's got a great one as well. And EX Legs. EX Legs is just the best option in the game. EX Legs soaks up Super Dash. And after any hit, you can pretty much combo off of it into massive damage. You, you can tell by the way he's looking at you on that tier list bar. He's not happy that we're talking about him. He might TOD me just for acting up. And the last character up here is Yamcha. I think he definitely earns the last spot in S+. If you don't think he's up here, I guess I can't say I blame you. He might be high S, but I won't settle for anything other than that. Yamcha is a very, very good character in this game who also benefited greatly from EX moves being dropped down to half a bar. So yeah, I really don't have too much to say for Yamcha. Assist is great, and EX being half a bar, also pretty great for him. Whew. Okay, that took a while to go through all of the S plus characters individually, so hopefully you can understand that we're not going to go through the entire cast like that. But let's take a look at the opposite end of the spectrum, looking at the lowest tier available on my list, which is B. We'll also take a look at a couple other lists and how low they rank there. But on my list, my personal B ranking is Super Saiyan Goku, Goku Black, Android 16, Gogeta, and Videl. Now, let's just start with Goku. It's very unfortunate. He lost his 2M. A lot of other characters got beam assist. So, not a lot of reason to play this character these days, unfortunately. He still does have some good qualities. Obviously, every character on this roster does. Fighters is a pretty even game these days, but I would definitely say, compared to other characters in the game, playing Super Saiyan Goku just doesn't feel as needed anymore. Goku Black also pretty much feels that way with how many other characters have gotten beam assist, but Goku Black struggles to open people up. He's just a bit too slow. Uh, it's especially sad how slow the Zamasu command grab is. I wish that could be worked into his game a little bit more, but I do think his key blast game uh, does have some potential there. I like the slow and fast key blast option, but definitely going to need a little bit more to see some more Goku Black pop up in tournaments. The one that I think will surprise people the most here is maybe Gogeta Blue if you haven't been keeping up on the game in a while, but Gogeta Blue is just a very slow character when it comes to try it and stagger his normals. His jab is ridiculously slow and almost makes it so the fact that you can dragon rush off of a jab almost doesn't mean anything to Gogeta because his jab is so slow anyway. That goes for a lot of his normals, of course, which is what leads a lot of people to just not playing him. Even though his mix is okay and he does have a really good button in the form of his jumping medium, it's just not enough to sell people on him. And as for Videl, honestly, I, I could have dropped Videl down to C tier, but I do feel like she does some things decently. The only thing is she doesn't have a reflect, which is overall pretty bad in most standard scenarios. There are a few situations where the dodge is better, but uh, overall, I don't think it's mechanic that they'll bring back with just the normal dodge unless they significantly rework it. I think Videl is a warning that maybe for most players, it's just too much to ask to not have a reflect. All right, now that we've gone through both the top and the bottom of my list, here is my full tier list in its entirety. I do have to mention two things right away though. Everything below S plus isn't really organized. For the B tier, it doesn't really matter all too much. I think you could shuffle them around in some orders with Videl still being the last, but for A and S, they are completely unordered as well. So please do not think that because one character is more to the left or higher than the other, that I think they are better. I just threw the characters in because honestly, once you get to this level of DBFZ, I think characters can go up or down depending on, you know, things that are discovered for the character, players that are making waves, undiscovered tech, all that sort of stuff. So, so if you have any thoughts on these characters in specific, please let me know. I would love to know some more in-depth thoughts about these characters. All right, but now that we're dealing with such a large pool of characters, I'm not going to go into each of them individually. Instead, I'm going to pick out a few that I think are important to talk about, and hopefully knowing more about what those characters can do can give context to the other characters in that tier, if that makes sense. Up first, let's talk about DBZ Broly, because he is an incredible character as well, and probably one of the best zoners in the game. You can control the screen very effectively with this character just by holding down your S button, throwing out those key blasts, and then going into a quarter circle forward S in case you think they're going to approach on the ground, or maybe throw out a beam or something like that. This is, of course, also heightened by the fact that he does have super armor and some really annoyingly fast command grabs, so overall, a very scary character to go against. The same can be said for base Goku, who also has an insanely fast command grab that is pretty much unreactable. Honestly, I really do think that Goku's light command grab is probably his best tool, but I could be wrong on that. Base Goku players, let me know down below in the comments, of course. DBS Broly I have up here just because of how much damage he does. You could also say the same for Zamasu, but each of them do have subtle flaws that I do think keeps them from being better. For Zamasu, it's really easy. I think his key blast is the wackest thing in the game that really makes him commit to a big time waste if he does want to go for something in neutral from across the screen. So obviously, I think that's a big deal. DBS Broly, on the other hand, I just think has too much reliance on his 2L. I think if you want to throw out the other buttons, they're a bit too slow. But of course, you do get that big damage reward. So obviously, both really great characters nonetheless. And one of the last characters I want to talk about in the S tier is probably GT Goku, just to let people know why he's fallen a little bit. Not that he's fallen off completely, but there are a few things about him that are most definitely worse than season two. For one, his auto combo was significantly shortened, so it's much less annoying to get away from now. He doesn't have that chase down potential while he's screaming at you. And also, his spirit bomb is no longer a hard 
knockdown, taking away one aspect of his mix-up game. But other than that, I think that's pretty much it for big noticeable changes. GT Goku is still really good, and his A assist is still outstanding. And the last character I wanted to talk about, of course, is Krillin. I threw Krillin up in the S tier because I think Season 3 has been really, really great to him. And in ways that I didn't necessarily expect, I would want him to be buffed. Not only did Krillin actually get a beam assist that I've been asking for for about three years now, but his A assist was also significantly improved to the point where it might be one of the better assists in the game. I think once more players pick up the rock assist and start finding some really ridiculous setups for it, Krillin might get a lot more play time than he is right now. But even right now, I think Krillin's really good and deserving of the S tier, even if it is on the lower end of the spectrum. And to wrap up my list, I think characters in the A tier can just be described as can do stuff that the S tier can do, but you have to work a lot harder for it. So that pretty much encapsulates characters like Android 17, Nappa, Janemba. All of these are characters that can do some insane things, but you just need to work a lot harder to get them going for you. But of course, before we can actually wrap up this video, we have to take a look at the best player in the world's tier list, Goichi. Now, of course, as far as I'm aware, this is his most recent tier list, but this is back in May, so we are talking a decent chunk of time. So I can't guarantee that these are his most recent up-to-date thoughts. But as you can tell, his top tier is pretty similar to mine. His S tiered looks somewhat similar. He values sell a lot more than I do. I'm just looking at this for the first time and recording this live, by the way. So hopefully this isn't too bad, but he values sell a lot more than I do. He also split it up into S minus and put Eurus up there. That's surprising. And then for his A tier, yeah, Krillin is still an A tier. <laughs> I do think Krillin could be better though. And his B tier was also his lowest tier, including Goku Black, Jiren, and Videl. I, now, I personally would say that Jiren is a little better than that. I do think Jiren did get buffed from season three in a pretty noticeable way. It's unfortunate. I do think UI Goku is just a better Jiren. So it kind of hurts his play style or at least his placings for a lot of people that might be into that style. But you know, why would they not just play UI Goku? But I do think Jiren's a little better than that, at least A tier worthy. I think that's where I had him on my list. Yeah, that is. So yeah, I can say uh, obviously a very agreeable list. I'm not going to argue with this guy. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with the best of the world about who the character, who the better characters are. But let me know your thoughts on both my list and his down below in the comments, as well as your own personal list, of course. While you're down there, make sure to like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date on all things Dragon Ball Fighters and other fighting games. And I'm most certainly looking forward to the future of Dragon Ball Fighters to continue to see just how wrong I was in this video. <laughs> Other than that, there's some videos you can watch up on your screen right now. I have been Dr. Doya, and I will see you in the next video.